Good afternoon. We are on Friday, the 11th of August, 2023. I'm going to be sharing... Oh, sorry about this. <coughs> My <coughs> throat has suddenly filled up with phlegm. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you the liturgical readings for today, Friday 11th of August, and it is St. Clare's feast day. She was from a very rich family, but she took vows of poverty, and she was just a wonderful saint. Um, I'm going to begin with one or two small prayers before I do the readings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A guardian angel prayer for Mass. <coughs> I've heard two today. Dear guardian angel, go for me to the church. There kneel down at Mass for me, at the offertory. Take me to God and offer him my services. What I am, what I have, offer as my gift. At the consecration with your seraphic strength, adore my Saviour, truly preparing for those who have loved me, for those who have offended me, and for those who are deceased, that the blood of Jesus, uniting him with me in spirit, so that my heart may become his dwelling place, plead with him that through his sacrifice all people throughout the world may be saved. When the Mass ends, bring home to me and to every home the Lord's blessing. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love entrusts me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And we pray for the faithful departed, especially all those who are losing their lives in war, particularly Ukraine and Russia and any other place in Africa or wherever they choose to be fighting. The Lord says, Thou shalt not kill. An act of contrition. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins because of your just punishments, but most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. A prayer of entrustment, dear and loving Mother Mary, Keep your hand upon me this day. Guard my mind, my heart and my senses, that I may not commit sin. Make my thoughts, affections, words and actions holy, so that I may be pleasing to you and to your divine Son, Jesus, and attain heaven with you. Jesus and Mary, give me your holy blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before reading sacred scripture, open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 4, verses 32 to 40, and the theme, God loved your fathers and chose their descendants after them. Moses said to the people, put this question then to the ages that are past, 
that went before you from the time God created man on earth. Was there ever a word so majestic from one end of heaven to the other? Was anything ever heard? Did ever a people hear the voice of the living God speaking from the heart of the fire as you heard it and remain alive? Has any God ventured to take himself one nation from the midst of another by ordeals, signs, wonders, war, with mighty hand and outstretched arm, by fearsome terrors, all this that the Lord your God did for you before your eyes in Egypt, this he showed you so that you might know that the Lord is God indeed and that there is no other. He let you hear his voice out of heaven for your instruction on earth. He let you see his great fire and from the heart of the fire you heard his word because he loved your fathers and chose their descendants after them. He brought you out from Egypt, openly showing his presence and his great power, driving out in front of you nations greater and more powerful than you yourself, and brought you into their land to give it to you for your heritage as it is still today. Understand this today, therefore, and take it to heart. The Lord is God indeed, in heaven above as on earth beneath, and he and no other. Keep his laws and commandments as I give them to you today, so that you and your children may prosper and live long in the land that the Lord your God gives you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Psalms. Excuse me a moment, sorry. <laughs> the response to the psalm, and the psalm is 76. The response is... I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember your wonders of old. I muse on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. I remember the deeds of the Lord. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is great? as our God. You are the God who works wonders. You showed your power among the peoples. I remember the deeds of the Lord. Your strong arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. You guided your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. <coughs> Excuse me. I remember the deeds of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, 
16, verses 24 to 26, as a theme. What has a man to offer in exchange for his life? Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behaviour. I tell you solemnly, there are some of these standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming with his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we will do a brief reflection and then I will do some prayers. Um, because it's very short reading today. That's how it goes. Sometimes they're long and sometimes they're short. So we'll reflect on the 18th week in ordinary time. Matthew 16, verses 24 to 28. In the Gospels, Jesus often speaks in the language of paradox. One of the most striking instances of that is to be found in today's Gospel reading. When Jesus says, Anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. Another way of expressing that is to say, If we seek ourselves only, we will lose ourselves. Whereas if we reach beyond ourselves towards God and towards his son Jesus, we will find our true selves. If we look to ourselves alone and our own needs and preferences, we risk losing ourselves. Whereas if we look towards the Lord, which will always mean looking towards others, we will find life in this world and eternal life in the next. And of course we've all made mistakes in our past, in our earlier lives when we were younger, and they've had consequences and affected our lives now. I personally have made terrible decisions, wrong decisions, but at the time that I made them they seemed right for me or right for that particular situation or right for another person who would have suffered had you not made a different choice than you did at the time. It's all complicated and uh, we pay for it. We do pay for it in the long run. I mean, Jesus expressed this fundamental paradox of his teaching in another way when he said, give and it will be given to you. In other words, it is giving that we receive. So when we give, we receive. Our own experience of life teaches us the truth contained in this paradox. It's only when you look back you can see your choices were wrong. At the time that you're making them, you don't feel they're wrong because you have a narrower look. But it does have consequences. So it's when we look beyond ourselves to others and to the Lord present in others that we experience the Lord's own joy. So our choices make us suffer, and for a very long time. And that the Lord, 
Well, we look beyond ourselves to to the Lord present in others. He is present in others. That we can experience the Lord's own joy, the Lord's own life, which is a foretaste of the joy and the life of the kingdom of heaven. And sadly, we can't turn the clock back. We have to accept the wrong decisions that we've made. Um, we, we might try, but we're not always successful because it really depends how much you have hurt somebody, somebody close to you you may have hurt. You have to keep praying to God and asking his mercy and compassion and helping you, but if the other person is so hurt, it, they might not in this life, this world, ever be able to forgive you. And you have to live with that. And then they, they won't even talk about it. So that makes it harder. That makes it worse. But you shouldn't give up. You have to keep praying and trusting in God that he will deal with that situation. In the fullness of time, hopefully he will. In the meantime, I can only recommend prayer. Re recommend prayer and repentance and uh, if the person won't deal with you um, you just have to keep praying for them particularly if they're close to you yes you know you're wrong or have been wrong you're probably not wrong anymore but they they don't want to know they don't want you in their life because of the hurt that you've done to them or they perceive it they don't fully understand the picture they don't understand the picture of the choices, especially if they made you make a choice. They said either or, not let's talk about it, but they gave you a choice to make a choice that didn't go in their favour, that went in another person's favour, and that has repercussions because of the lack of forgiveness. It's very hard to forgive. We can only forgive in the power of Christ. We personally, in our own, we don't have that power. We have to join our self to the power of God to, to be able to make those commitments of forgiveness which are required. So, I'm no better than anybody else at forgiving, but I know what we have to do. I do try and forgive all the time, but you don't always get the opportunity. So I'm now going to look at my little folder, the Glenstall Abbey. I just listened to a mass from them. I turned over from Walsingham. Not turned off, turned over from one channel to another. Not turned off. <laughs> turned to, I, I like the, um, the uh, monks. And I like to listen to them, but they happen to be on at the same time as Walsingham. So I'm going to share some of the... I've typed up their little prayer book. So I'm going to go through a lot of prayers because uh, there wasn't much readings today. And there are readings in this folder that are straight out of that prayer book. You can buy it from them. That's how I bought mine. So it's got lots of sections in here. And I'll just go through some of them because I like them. Uh, what does it say there, that little prayer at the front I missed? It says, Faithful heart, sincere, and take the pledges of salvation here, Ireland, 7th century. So the first prayer is to our Redeemer. Soul of Christ, make me holy. Body of Christ, be my salvation. Blood of Christ, let me drink your wine, water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me clean. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Kind Jesus, hear my prayer. Hide me within your wounds and keep me close to you. Defend me from the evil enemy, call me at my death to the fellowship of your saints so that I may sing your praise with them through all eternity. Amen. And that was taken from the Roman Missal. 
13, these are all numbered. Prayers of self-dedication. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for any reward save that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. That's from St. Ignatius of Loyola. And the second one is coming up now. Receive, Lord, all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my whole will. You have given me all that I have, all that I am, and I surrender all to your divine will that you dispose of me. Give me only your love and your grace. With this I am rich enough, and I have no more to ask. Amen. And number 14, prayer in difficult times. At least to pray is left. Is left, O oh Jesus, in the air. <coughs> I know not which the chamber is. I am knocking everywhere. Thou settest earthquake in the south and maelstrom in the sea. Say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hast thou no arm for me? Amen. That was by Emily Dixon. And now this is a blessing. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace with your house or your place where you are, office, work, and all who live there. And a reading. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. That's from Luke 10, 5 to 6 and 9. Continuing with a blessing. Lord, we ask you to bless those who live in your home. Be their shelter when they are at home. Their companion when they are away. And their welcome guest when they return. And at last receive them into the dwelling place you have prepared for them in your Father's house where you live forever and ever. Amen. And then you get your holy water and you sprinkle the house and you can say the following. Let this water bless this house and call to mind our baptism into Christ who has redeemed us by his death and resurrection. Amen. May the peace of Christ reign in our hearts and may the word of Christ in all its richness dwell in us so that whatever we do in word or work we will do in the name of the Lord. Amen. And the blessing of a family in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with this house and all who live here and also with you. And the reading is from Colossians 3, 12 to 15. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Also, must, You must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. Lord, we ask you to bestow on this family and all those families listening 
the riches of your blessing, especially Tony Lynch's family, with the gift of your grace, sanctify those who live there so that faithful to your commandments they will care for each other, ennoble this world by their lives and reach the home you have prepared for them in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord, the God of hope, fill you with every joy in believing. May the peace of Christ abound in your hearts. May the Holy Spirit enrich you with his gifts now and forever. Amen. For all my listeners, especially now I'm going to do something for the elderly. And there's a few of us. <laughs> in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. The reading, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's from Philippians 4, 4-5. Lord our God, you have given Jane Smith, Suzanne Covis, Tony and his family and Deborah Roll and many, many others, Angela Rose. The grace to maintain hope in you through all life's changes and to taste and see your goodness. We bless you for your gifts and we pray for David Yates, who we haven't heard from for ages, on him and his wife and Debbie and family and doggies. And we ask that you all may have good health and may inspire us by the example of your lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And I have a, had a friend, uh, an a, a old, old man has recently died from our parish. He was very kind. So Marcel, this is for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the Father of mercies, the God of all consolations, be with you all, and his family, and his daughter, and granddaughters, and also with you. And the reading from Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So, Lord our God, the death of Marcel recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth, but for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your son's disciples and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's re resurrection <coughs> to this time of testing and pain as we pray for Marcel and for his family who are left and for those who love him through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the blessing of a sick person, and I have too many to name actually at the moment, uh, but uh, I bless this for all of your sick ones as well. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and also with you. As we prepare to pray, we keep in mind the words of scripture which tells us how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about healing everyone. 
So the reading is from Matthew 8, 14 to 17, for the sick. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed by demons and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Lord and Father, almighty and eternal God, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward your servant, Aragada, and free her from all illness and restore her to her health, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness she will be gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father bless you. Amen. May God the Son comfort you. Amen. May the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for those people going on a journey, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And the reading is, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being, be with us throughout the course of this journey so that under your protecting hand we may reach our destination in safety through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of a person in need of inner healing. I pray this for my son James. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Christ be with you, James, and also with you and anyone else who needs the same. And the reading, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers. They shall not overwhelm you when you walk through fire. You shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. That was from Isaiah 43, 1-3. Ever faithful God, you sent into the darkness of our lives, your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Stretch forth your healing hand, James, your servant. Give him serenity of mind and peace of heart. Raise him up in body, soul and spirit and deliver him from all evil. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father bless you. Amen. May God the Son comfort you. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not going to do the next prayer. It's when I used to go with Sister Bernardo, we'd pray this when visiting a cemetery. Um, but I will read Psalm 117. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. Let the family of Israel say, 
His love endures forever. Let the family of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. I called the Lord in my distress. He answered and freed me. The Lord is at my side. I do not fear. What can mortals do against me? The Lord is at my side as my helper. I shall look down on my foes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in rulers. The nations all encompassed me. In the Lord's name I crushed them. They compassed me, compassed me about. In the Lord's name I crushed them. They compassed me about like bees. They blazed like a fire among thorns. In the Lord's name I crushed them. I was thrust down, thrust down and falling. But the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand has triumphed. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, but I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Open to me the gates of holiness. I will enter and give thanks. This is the Lord's own gate where the just may enter. I will thank you, for you have answered, and you are my saviour. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. O oh Lord, grant us salvation. O oh Lord, grant success. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. Go forward in procession with branches, even to the altar. You are my God, I thank you, my God. I praise you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. A reading from Psalm 145. My soul give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God while I live. Put no trust in in the powerful mere mortals, in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. They are happy who are helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord. Their God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed, it is God who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free, the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. It is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. Amen. And a reading from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing to our God for he is loving. To him our praise is due. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up all their wounds. He fixes the number of stars. He calls each one by its name. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord raises the lowly. He humbles the wicked to the dust. O oh, sing to the Lord, giving thanks. Sing psalms to our God with the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares the rain for the earth, making the mountains sprout with grass and with plants to serve our needs. He provides the beasts with their food, and young ravens that call upon him. His delight is not in horses, nor his pleasure in warrior's strength. The Lord delights in those who revere him, in those who wait for his love. 
Psalm 147. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow as white as wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He hurls down hailstones like crumbs. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it melts them. At the breath of his mouth, the waters flow. He makes his word known to Jacob. To Israel his laws and decrees. He's not dealt thus with other nations. He's not taught them his decrees. A reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him shining stars. Praise him highest heavens and the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. He commanded, they were made. He fixed them forever. Gave a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea creatures and all oceans, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy winds that obeys his word. All mountains and hills, all fruit trees and cedars, beasts wild and tame, reptiles and birds on the wing, all earth's nations and peoples, earth's princes and rulers, the young men and maidens, the old together with children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he alone is exalted. The splendour of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. He exalts the strength of his people. He is the praise of all his saints, of the sons and daughters of Israel, of the people to whom he comes close. The word of the Lord. Final psalm is 150, which is the last one in the book of Psalms. Praise God in his holy place. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for the powerful deeds. Praise his surpassing greatness. Oh, praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Oh, praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with clashing of cymbals. Let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to the Lord. Alleluia. The word of the Lord. Section 4, readings from the rule of St. Benedict. I will just do a few of those because I know that from previous times they're quite long and they're directed really at his monks, but they can apply to us too, except I'm not a son, I'm a daughter. Hear and heed, my son, the master's teaching, and bow the ear of your heart. Willingly take to yourself the Father's advice, and fulfil it in what you do. Thus, by laborious obedience, will you return to him, from whom you have withdrawn, by idle disobedience. R. N. Prologue Let us open our eyes to the divine light, and with startled ears, let us listen to what the divine voice is calling out every day, urging us today, if you should hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And the final one, as for him who's making progress in the religious life and in faith, his heart opens wide, and with the joy that is too great for words, and which comes from love, he runs ahead in the way of God's commandments. Amen. I won't do any more because I know that there is quite a lot and uh, I think that's long enough because the mass readings are there and it's, I just happened to pick up this folder which is one of many. I've got so many all around me. I'm just looking through it. It's quite a while since I've looked at this one. 
I'm surprised I've typed up so much stuff, but that was because of the cataracts, <laughs> so that I could still read them when my eyes get bad. But I don't actually read them much. It's just when I pick one up every now and then. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. So I'll just finish with that prayer after reading sacred scripture. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Amen. Glorious Father, give us the Holy Spirit to make us wise so that we may come to know you, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know the hope to which you have called us, the rich blessings you have promised, and how great is your power at work in those who believe. Amen. Oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. <coughs> Sorry, I felt that sneeze coming. This cold is really a, a nuisance for me. Since 1st of May, it just won't leave me. Lord God, fill us with knowledge of your will. Through the wisdom and spiritual understanding, your spirit bestows on your faithful ones so that we may conduct ourselves in a worthy manner, be fruitful in every type of work, and do always what is pleasing to you. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. And... Have a time with the Lord when you can as well. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for listening. And thank you for your very, very kind comments. God bless you all. I'll continue to pray for you all over the weekend. It's something I like doing. God bless and bye-bye. <laughs>